Well, hello everybody. It's Leanne Greff for today's Facebook Live. Every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Central Time. So let me know that you're here, where you're from, if it's your first time here, um, if you're stamping today or plan on stamping this week. Sometimes you have to make a plan to get your stamping done. Honestly, life is so busy and we have so many interruptions and things we want to do and then there's that uh, scrolling on Facebook and Pinterest that <laughs> takes our time away from our possible crafting time. There's that that meme that people say is get off the computer and craft and that is so true at least for me and from some I've talked to. So I'm just waiting for my laptop to sync up here and I can start welcoming people. Oh there we go. Okay all right. Okay, all right. Oh, let's see. Looks like, yeah, there you go. Karen's on. Welcome, Karen. Okay, all right, let's get started. My screen or my table is very busy because I've got a bunch of swaps in from my uh, framed florets swap that I joined. And I'm not gonna go through each of them today. I may do that another time, but this side over here, it features the framed florets. Now remember, this is a new collection that Stampin' Up! is offering through January 4th. So, but some of these products are while supplies last and some will be back. So this bundle will be back in the spring catalog. This stamp set, the uh, framed and festive, will not, this will not return. This is a Christmas set. So this is while supplies last, as well as the spiral gold gems are while supplies last, and yeah, and then the paper. So this is the paper that is um, through January 4th or while supplies last. So if you like it, I recommend you get it soon. But um, yeah, I will. And there, um, I think last week I posted a link to these products, but if you just go, to stampinup.com um, or my my um, ordering page, you will and click under what's new. This will be on there, so you can see it there. But yeah, I got some beautiful swaps. I love some of the dies that are included in that, and of course, all the ovals of that as well. Nice box fold. Something we're going to be doing today is this box fold, only in a different presentation. Um, let's see. Yeah, there are, this is another one of the oval dies that is in there with this little frame. You can see that. I didn't take it out of the plastic uh, sleeves or clear envelopes. Did you know we have these clear envelopes in our um, annual catalog? They protect your cards. If you're storing them, selling them, yeah, it's a great way to um, protect your cards. So yeah, lots of fun folds and whatnot in here. So I will be probably sharing more details on them. Here are the Christmas versions. Look at this neat fold. Um, I don't remember what that's called, that card fold, but this is, these are from the Christmas one, the framed and festive. So love that this paper, you can color the berries. I did that on last week's live. So yeah. Okay, you're ready for snow? Oh, we had snow yesterday. We got about an inch and we're supposed to get, I don't know, up to three more um, tomorrow and the next day. So winter is officially here and it's going to be in the teens and the 20s for most of the next few weeks. So uh, <laughs> I'm not ready for winter at all. Not at all. Okay, last week's prizes were the Nature's Beauty stamp set and a red sheer ribbon. And the winners are Melinda Blevins won the stamp set and Candace Birch won the ribbon. So I'll be sending them to you. I'm not sure, Melinda, if I have your address or if you're on today yet. She's pretty good about watching and every week, but sometimes it's the replay. So congratulations, gals. I appreciate you sharing and commenting and watching. Um, this week's prize for sharing is a card kit that I gave away in July. It's an eight card kit. Everything is pre-cut. All you need to add is or are uh, greetings. So you can jazz them up if you want to. And um, yeah, but it's eight cards that you can do your way. I do have a P uh, tutorial uh, written project sheets, I guess. 
we call them for the, the cards too that the winner will receive. So help me get the word out about my videos if you enjoy them and put them on you know, a crafting site or your own uh, Facebook page. Uh, the person who um, comments will be, anybody who comments will be in the prize drawing for these ribbons. And some are retired and some are current. So, so yeah, th those are the prizes for next week's drawing. Okay, ah, one thing I'm doing this month is I have a 13 project tutorial that I'm giving to everybody who places an online order or who order or who orders the Fitting Florets um, eight products from me. So anything you order, everybody gets this huge tutorial full of card ideas. Okay, they did announce today, let's see if there's anything else. Um, oh, the free designer paper share with orders over $50. So they're four by six pre-cut pieces ready for you to craft with. And the announcement today for specials was Paper Pumpkin. So tomorrow, the 9th and the 10th, Paper Pumpkin past kits, refill kits, and add-ons like the shopping bags and the North Pole sacks are 50% off. So everything that's on the Paper Pumpkin um, purchase site, I guess I just have to say the past kits and the refill kits, are all half off. That means you get a whole kit with stamp set, ink, everything in it for like $10. And some of the past kits, I don't know if I put, there's a, a Halloween one and a Valentine one that are already reduced, they will be half off as well. So if you haven't ever gotten a paper pumpkin kit, now this is the mini shopping bags, they're good size. So these will be half off. This is the pick of the crop, um, kit that um, you can add on the mini shopping bags to it there that's a separate uh, purchase but you get nine cards everything is pre-done for you you get printed envelopes you get an ink spot you get all the die cut pieces vellum is in this one so that's the pick of the crop i'm going to go through just a couple of them this one is the this one was my favorite because it's kind of it's not frou-frou, it could be for guys. And so we struggle with guy cards. But this is the Sending Good Thoughts. And here's the stamp set with the ship, the, the um, scroll, the seahorse, uh, sea stars, and greetings, Bermuda Bay. This was an alternative card I made just by adding a, I don't know, this is the card base from the kit. I, I think I just changed it up slightly from the kit. So that, and you get, like I said, all the additions to twine and, and uh, embellishments. This one is available, celebrating in color paper pumpkin. So there's the, you get a nice big happy and a U and these great greetings. Everything's in there. So for 10 bucks, you get a whole kit that is ready to go. This one is called Change is Beautiful. I didn't even open it up yet. I think I ordered an extra one a melon mambo, and this stamp set with butterflies and lots of greetings. So these are available only to Paper Pumpkin subscribers. So it's kind of a, a tease for some of you who are not Paper Pumpkin subscribers, but the kit for November, if you subscribe today through Thursday, you can get any of these extra items at half off. So the kit for November, would be um, the, from the North Pole and it's tags. And it's got some glitz and glimmer. And remember, all of my Paper Pumpkin subscribers get at least 12, I think it's nine, I think it's 10 to 12 bonus projects every month to do to change up their kit. So even though this is tags, you can bet there'll be a lot of card ideas for the holidays um, in my bonus projects that everybody gets. So don't forget to subscribe or purchase a one month kit and add on any of these, there's even more. Down to Valentine's to our recent uh, uh, Halloween spooky treats. There's just lots. So yeah, go to the Paper Pumpkin site or go to um, type in this one you're ordering and you'll get a prize from me um, and those tutorials for new um, ideas with the uh, framed florets collection. Okay, little update on what is not available right now according to Stampin' Up are the festive 
pearls, the iridescent pearls, gold and vanilla ribbon, distressed gold paper, the seasonal sequins, embossing powder packs, the glimmer six inch red and white, and the glimmer 12 by 12 from the um, holiday catalog. So those are some things that are out of stock in right now. Changes by the day. They get things back in all the time and they run out of things all the time. The um, shipping issues are still happening um, in within the world. So we are kind of at the mercy of the ships, container ships, traffic, yeah, and supply and demand. It's And then with employee issues, I know in, in our state, there's a huge shortage on workers. They just cannot find enough workers to actually do the jobs. I don't know what happened to people after COVID. My husband said they found out they can deal without work or live without working as hard as they would just cut back and they don't work as much. So, but you know, I don't know, but we are short on people here in North Dakota of working um, any, most any jobs. They're hard to find. Okay, we are going to start playing and we're playing with the Cottage Wreaths Bundle. So there's something interesting about this bundle that before I even get started, I wonder if, yeah, I think I can do this. Okay, so on the stamp set, it's very interesting. You know how when you have a wreath, I don't know if any of you have a wreath, and if there's a die that matches it, you stamp it, and you put the die on it, and you go round and around and around and trying to figure out where it actually fits. Well, guess what? Stampin' Up put an arrow on a spot on the stamp set here. So once you're, you lay your stamp in here, I marked it. So let's see if I can find the stamp. I put a tiny little mark. I'll just peel this off so you can see. So see that? I put a tiny little mark on the side of this um, photopolymer image. See that little dot, that black dot is from a Sharpie or a black blend marker. So now I know when I put it on my block to put it at the top or the bottom or a corner, whatever you wanna to remember to do. Then on the die, there is a little arrow. Hopefully I'm putting that up there. A little arrow there that that matches that area. See how I put that arrow right where that black dot is? So they were so smart and helped us out. And so we don't have to go round and around and around <laughs> when we're trying to match up our, our dies. So I was super um, pleased about that. That is, um, yeah, a nice bonus for this set. But this set has anything from leaves to and grateful spiders for Boo and then Christmas. So it's not just a Christmas wreath. It has a bow on there, but I'm gonna make a card that is not Christmas to show you um, how this works. Okay, so we made this card at my card clubs in October. And this is the front of it, and it's a double box fold. So it stands up like that. Isn't that neat? So normally these box folds stand up like this, but they always tip. And so I really like the fact that you can have them on their side. And then I did stamp on the back, got a little glue on there. Um, so yeah, and it folds flat. And I also really like the fact that this greeting kind of adds a little more interest because it's off the, the card. You're like, oh, that won't, won't fit in the envelope. Well, yes, it does. So when it folds flat, it fits in the envelope. So the colors here, I've always liked gray with yellows. I just think it's, it's soft, it's soothing. So this is a smoky slate with so saffron. Okay, all right, so let's get started. So I've got the measurements here for you. And get my parts and pieces out. Should have everything there. Okay, we're gonna make a little different version than that card. Okay, so this is just four and a quarter by ten and a half, and you score at five and a half, six and three quarters, eight inches, and nine and a quarter. Okay, so that is um, the measurements. So then you simply just fold all of those measurements or all those score lines, and there's your first box. So one thing I did notice that when I scored, either my score is off or my cutting's off, is this didn't quite have, um, didn't fold flat. So I'm gonna just trim off, oh, a hair. 
on here. Oops. Okay. All right. So now let's try that again. Okay, there we go. Now it folds flat. But before we can put that on, we're going to add, well, not before we do that part. We can do that anytime. But what is nice about this is that when you lay it flat like it would fit in an envelope, you can add your designer paper. Now, designer paper that I used for this card is the Gingham Cottage. And I'm going to change up the colors. Instead of using the So Saffron, I'm going to use um, this piece right there. So, all right, we're going to start adding our glue Move this way. This has a ton of different colors, as you can see, so it's very versatile. Let me just add my designer paper, and yeah, it's black, but it works beautiful with the So Saffron. And yeah, I know I'm adding it on the paper and not the, <laughs> the uh, on the base instead of the designer paper. But I don't feel I need to go to the edge with my glue, so it works just fine. All right, so now we're adding glue to this area. Mm, I've gotten a and you just lay it flat, just like you would fold your, like you would mail your card, and then you can open that up, and it should fold nicely flat and open up well. Okay, so I did texture this white square piece. Isn't that beautiful? So this is from the Twigs and Sprigs embossing folder and die. And there's, an, there's a die that matches these, I don't know which way it would be. Maybe, yeah, like, yeah, like that. You probably can't see through the plastic, but it, you can die cut and then, or texture and then die cut these and you get all these pretty detailed sprigs and twigs and leaves and things from that. So it's kind of a neat, this is in the annual catalog if you're wondering where that's at. It's a, it's a combo, it doesn't come separately. So there's that. We will um, add glue to this. One thing I found that for textured pieces, strong adhesive is sometimes necessary um, for a good hold when you have that texture in dimension, it doesn't always like to hold um, as easily. Okay, so this smoky slate piece is right here, five and a half by three and a half, scored at three and a half and four and three quarters. So we're just going to um, fold that and that is gonna go right here. So what you can do is lay it on, uh, you can decide if you want this to the edge and when it's folded flat so it it fits nicely on there. So what you can do then <laughs> is lift that up, add a little adhesive here, and then fold that flat again, and make sure you're still on track there. The nice thing about the glue is it's movable. I'm looking at my white as well to make sure it's even top and bottom. And then just press on there. Okay, we open that up, and we're going to add glue to this part right here. Okay, so fold that all flat like you would mail it, then press, and then we have our double box, okay? So this one, when I did this one, I had a longer piece here and I didn't like it as well, and I still feel like I should cover that, but I'm gonna just live um, with without, <laughs> um, oh, oh, it's, it's not adhering. I better press that a little. That texture can really be um, take a little bit of time. All right, so now we get to our stamping. And remember, there's a back piece too. So here's the stamp set. I'll put that over here. Well, I'll put it over here. Okay, all right. So on the wreath, we're going to make it a little bit differently than this one was. So with this wreath, I created that. Now, there are two die cuts that are, I would call them more solid, um, that this one's a little larger and this one's a little smaller, but I wanted stamping behind it, and the wreaths in here do not show up wi a lot wider, so I decided to create my own wreath. So how I did that was I took... <laughs> 
a piece, uh, just a, I think it's a one inch circle, and I took this stamp, stamp image right there and just stamped six times all the way around here. And then after that, I used the leaves, which are right here, and stamped around that. Now I'm not gonna do that this time, I'm going to change it up and show you a different way. Okay, so we're going to use basic gray ink, which comes off almost like black in my case. I don't know um, why it's so dark, but it's not quite black. Okay, there's that. Oh, I see a little hair on there. I did not check for kitty hairs. So let's see. I'm gonna clean that off and do the other side. And, yep, there it is. I see it. Hopefully I got it. If not, it'll likely cover. Yep, there we go. Okay, so next, while I have that out here, I'm going to stamp my, <laughs> where did it go? Here we go, my greeting. Okay, so I decided for the versatility for my club gals to use the go-to greeting set, and that has um, hello, just a note, thank you, thinking of you, and happy birthday in many fonts and sizes. So it's really a nice set. I highly recommend this set. It's a million dollar set of Sandra, Hart Sandra Hartka. So it's beautiful fonts. If you, um, if you like curvy fonts, you'll like this set. So go to greetings annual catalog. All right, so now we go to the large wreath. Oh, wait. I'm gonna stamp that greeting while I've got it. I'm gonna do a thank you because I do a lot of thank you cards. It surprisingly does fit. It's tight, but it does fit. There we go, a little bit low. Okay, well that's done with the basic gray. Oh, I think I will do the back as well. And this is one of my favorite uh, sayings in this set. It's some people just make life better. Isn't that awesome? I think it's wonderful. It's just um, perfect for so many things that you could um, say to somebody. So that is the end of the basic gray. So I'm gonna go into smoky slate. Okay, so I'm gonna stamp this wreath in smoky slate right on top and I don't really have to worry about anything um, uh, being perfect. So it, it's either high or lower, but it's just fine. All right, so now I can add, it's kind of funny, um, when we were doing this, um, people thought that, that what I'm going to stamp next were lemons, and I'm doing acorns. But they said, are you gonna add some lemons? Well, I know we're stamping in, um, in So Saffron, and they probably look a little lemony, but they are acorns, so gonna add some acorns all the way around here and just trying to make our wreath more full and it just finishes it off nicely I know acorns aren't on a wreath but you know people make wreaths all the time with all kinds of the things so okay oh I don't want to keep that out but that is done. Now you can finish it off with one of the die cut bows that I had ready for everybody. So you can put it high, which I think I will. And a little tip that I like to use when I want something popped up but I don't really want to add a dimensional is to grab a mini glue dot and roll it up so it's thicker and you get a little, I've got ink on my thumb, I see, you get a little bit of dimension, but not a lot. It's not enough to um, inhibit the card from being mailed. Um, oh, I am really sticky, I'm trying to roll them up. I wanna add those, and I could use a tool, but I find that rolling these up is um, kind of fun. Okay, I think I'll add it up here. You can even add them off to the side, but I'm a little bit of a traditionalist. See how it's just popped up just a little bit? Okay, all right, and we'll add this to the main card. It's 
super easy dimensions um, on the scoring and the, the layers here. And then my greeting, did I get that somewhere? Yep, there we go. So this one can be either high or low, but I kind of like it off to the side. I am going to add a couple dimensionals to this. Make sure it's on the card. There we go. Okay, so there's the front. Oh, I forgot this piece right here. You don't have to add another piece, but it finishes it off nicely by um, adding pattern to all the sides. It kind of brings it all together when they're displaying it like this. Isn't that pretty? Okay, let's get to the back. Okay, now that's one version of the back. I'm going to do a little bit different, a little bit simpler. Okay, we'll use, I really like this piece right here. So let's see, we're going to, I don't like to have the stems show. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing right there. That's it. And then we'll bring back in the so saffron. I know it's so pretty. It's so fun to make your own, um, I guess you'd say pattern paper. There you go, just a few little things to bring the color back into the card. So this reed set is really neat. I really do have enjoyed playing with that. Okay, so on the back of the card, we'll just add our glue. Does it drive anybody crazy that I put my glue on this side instead of this side? <laughs> Some people have switched, I've got them to switch. I don't know why, it just feels like I can pick up this piece and add it without having to, um, to pick up something full of glue. Okay. All right, so there are, is our card. I didn't even add any embellishments. You could do a ribbon instead of the, the die cut bow very easily as well. Okay, there is the double box fold with the cottage wreaths. Okay, all right, moving on. We're gonna get into Christmas now. I'm gonna take a little drink wet my throat. Okay, that was the double box fold. Now we're going to get into the card. I've never made this fold before. I kind of challenged myself to try it. And I'm calling it a vertical slider. You know, like I've said before, I have no idea what to name some card folds because how do you look up the name of a fold when you don't know the name of it? So, <laughs> and I got one in a swap and of course, it wasn't named. The person didn't give me the name. So I just, I asked my husband and he, he agreed. And he, so we called it the vertical slider card. So this is it right here. So it's basically a gatefold card that has a slider mechanism on it. See that? What do you think? Have you seen one before? So that is my vertical slider card. Now, the designer paper that I used here is the Santa Express. So I used this one right here. I'm gonna use this pattern on another card, um, or actually a project, a, a treat bag. But um, yeah, so here, I'll open this up. So the recipient, I asked my husband, I handed it to him. And let me just show you. I basically put it together like this. I do that, and then I do that. And I said, so I said, open this card, and he did this. And it opened so I'm like oh so you don't have to slide it up to open it opened easy so any person will know how to open it the only problem is getting it closed again so basically what I do is you don't have to slide it this way you can insert the fold mechanism and then just slip that in but what I like about this besides it being fun is that it holds those gatefold cards closed and flat so yeah, it's really an interesting card um, to make. So there's the inside. You can see what I did with that greeting again. So I'm gonna, I haven't cleaned off some of those stamps. So I'm gonna do that while I'm, before we get started. Okay, all right. So the card base is very simple. When I do a, a gatefold card, it's scored at two and an eighth inches. I will score it two and an eighth, and I just flip it over 
and score two and an eighth. I know this is something six and whatever, but why why worry about that when I know it's two and an eighth? <laughs> I'm all about quick and easy. Um, I'm going to do, sometimes you need to do both sides when cardstock does not want to lay flat. Okay, here we go with um, adding my designer paper. Make sure that it fits correctly first. It's not bad. Okay. Oh, come on, glue. Don't get a bubble in you. One at a time. So don't get glue on myself. Okay. So that part's done. The inside is very quick. We will stamp that while we've got it. So, oh, I forgot to bring the stamp set. This Merry Christmas is from, oh, did I even write that down? I don't think I did. Somebody do some research for me and tell me where this Merry Christmas is from. So my colors are garden green and real red, real traditional Christmas. Oh, let me just put that up. So inking in real red. Well, I'm gonna look for any of my special kitty hairs that like to pop up but there's two sides to paper so that's always a pleasant thing never ever glue on your um, paper to your card before you're happy with it just is not um, a good idea yes it is garden green Karen thank you for asking okay we will do one that way and one that way. Okay, and I always stamp off before I clean. That gives me um, less a less dirty cleaner, my chamois. So these are the little berries in the kit. And just add a few berries here and there. Okay, add to the card. All right, I'm gonna move that over, add this, and yes, I'm estimating. <laughs> okay, center this. This is my usual three and a half by four and three quarter. You get five from a piece of white paper, so that helps you save paper when you're doing the insides of your card. Okay, we're gonna set those aside and work on our, I guess I'm gonna stamp my wreath first. Now, for this wreath, stamp in garden green. And this is one I was practicing on, but I'm gonna leave this. Now, for the die cut purpose, I have my little black dot at the top here. So we're gonna go with at the top. Okay, then stamp off. We're going to add these little, if I can point them out to you, these little fern, uh, pine, pine leaves, I guess you call them. Okay, so I'm just going to go around, and I think I stamped off with that one, but it does still fill in. And I could do this before I die cut or after I die cut. It really doesn't matter. Okay. All right, now some berries. I should maybe wait until I die cut, but if I stay within the... We'll see. And if it cuts them off a little bit, I'm okay with that too the blank areas or a little peak. Okay, we'll stamp right there. Okay, that should be the wreath. Now let's see how we line this up. And I'm going to get, you know what? Oh, I did not get a greeting out. So I'm going to use the one from their kit and do the Merry Christmas. It's small, but that'll be fine. And peel this off. I got a different greeting piece for this card. I'm gonna try something different. Okay, all right. Now I think we're done stamping. Put that away and get the um, mini cut and emboss machine out. And our die. Okay, so if I had that at the top, 
this little arrow should go right there. And yes, it does. Okay, so this is, there's not a magnetic plate for this. So I, I'll, I tend to use washi tape. I can find the ends here. <laughs> That's always a, a challenge. So how many of you use washi tape to hold your dies in place? Now the former uh, magnetic plate does work with this newer um, cut and emboss machine. So you can use um, on the big one. We do not have one for the small, we did. But it, um, oh, you know, another tip is always stagger your plates. So I'm gonna, what I mean by that is see that? It, and it goes through the machine so much nicer. Oh, I am all over the place with my paper here, aren't I? Okay. careful with your washi tape so you don't uh, pull any of your surface off on your die cut. You can use the washi tape a couple times. All right, so we have, I did texture the white piece here. I thought brick was very appropriate for a Christmas card and a wreath card especially. Here I did it the opposite of what I do usually do. Uh, okay, I'm gonna bring this back in. So I do want to pop this up. I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that in a little bit. So I think the wreath is so much prettier when it's popped up. So I'm gonna just use four of these, evenly spaced. And I know I want my brick to go that way. Now I did die cut a red glimmer one and I stamped one too. So I really like the glitz of the glimmer. So I think, and there's a die that fits the stamped bow. So, okay. So I guess I'm going to, I don't think there's any rhyme or reason. Oh, you know what? I don't like how that berry cut. So I think I'm going to cover that little berry up and put that right there. And then I'm just going to add a little adhesive to the die cut bow. It's a lot of detail to that one. I think I have a little extra glue there. Okay. All right, so this is my mechanism. I'm gonna, I'm gonna worry, well, no, I won't. I'm gonna do that now. So this is from our Stylish Shapes dies, that white piece, it's just a, a piece that I had in my scrap of, I say die cuts. So this is what I wanna do, is have a little more on top than I do on the bottom, and you'll see why in a minute. So to match up as best I can, I don't intend to be perfect, but I take a split, cut, cut to the middle, and then cut, and I'm just estimating the side that, it's not perfect, and that's okay. It doesn't have to be. We have to get over ourselves sometimes and just let it be. Okay, I mean, real imperfect, I don't really care too much for, but so that gives me a little something to adhere that on. But, and I can go high and, and that might be okay, an okay look. But if you go like this, it has the same edge all the way around. So I am going to Put a little bit of adhesive on that and then lay that on there and adhere it. So this will all be one piece that slides up and down and that's what it looks like from the back. Okay, now to get to our mechanism, what you do, these are two and a half inch squares and you score two of them at one and a quarter, right in half. So it's two and a half, one and a quarter is half. So then you burnish or press those and you adhere them to the third one. So I'm gonna live dangerously and do both sides. 
And the center seam has to be in the center, or the, the fold has to be in the center. That's very important. Okay, there's one. Very slideable when you have this much glue on. Then there's the other one. So make sure they meet in the middle. I love how this glue slides. Okay, so there's our mechanism right there. Now the important thing to remember is the flat side has to be up. Your, your two have to be next to this part. I did it the other way, it did not work. It did not work. So basically what you're gonna do is add adhesive. Any adhesive will be fine, but make sure it's vertical. That score line runs north and south on your piece. You could always wait to put your wreath and your greeting on to make sure that it's not. So let that sit and dry a little bit before you put it on your card. So you could even weight it if you want to, put some weight on it. Okay, so I'm gonna let that one sit. This is from the Leaves of Holly stamp set, that greeting, and the Holly Berry dies, I think, is this, this one right here. So yeah, post-it tape is a good idea for your um, your dies as well. I actually have some of that and I keep forgetting about it. So again, you just slip that in there and the recipient either opens it this way <laughs> and could, I mean, you could actually, when I think about it, why not even just adhere that? You could adhere this, but then you don't have the fun of sliding it. But if it bothers you that it does slide up, you could easily... Um, adhere that to the front of your card and the back. But I think it's just fun to, and it, it seems to hold very well um, and in place. Okay, let's get this one working now that it's set for a little bit and insert that and then insert that and there we go, two. Not sure, I think I like this one better, that greeting a little bit better than this one. Oh, I didn't add the red rhinestones to the berries, but this one does have the berry, just a one on each triple berry. I just didn't fill them all in. I thought that was plenty of glitz for this card. So what do you think of the vertical slider card? Yeah, it's really unusual and that it's kind of, especially for a crafter or a stamper, I think they'd get a kick out of it. Something, something new. Okay, all right, I'm gonna show you, before I get to my last project, I'm gonna show you a few other cards with this. Now this is just that simple um, wreath, berries, but then I added some of the die cuts, and I actually have some here. The, there are a lot of die cuts for everything in this set. So all the berries even have die cuts. You'll, let's see, did I use that one on, hmm. I thought I added that to one of my wreaths. Yes, where, isn't that fun? Oh, I know where it is, you'll see it in a minute. Um, but yeah, there's lots of dies for this this set. Here's one that was a swap. My, my downline uh, team member, Mary, made this one. And this one was made by Candy. And she added pearls as her embellishment instead of stamping. And then this one was a swap I received that's a fall one. And they just simply use the, the pretty greeting and those leaves and acorns. So, so yeah, that was a fall one. So you can see how versatile it can be. All right, so the last project I have for you today is a 3D or, what we, or a treat box, I guess you'd say. And I'm not gonna, well, I, I finished most of it. Um, ahead of time, but I'm gonna show you. So it's one of these. Do you remember these? So it's simply, and I have candy in here, simply a box on the bottom that you just kind of pinch. And I decided not to have ribbon. Normally I might poke some holes and thread some ribbon, but I've got a bow here. So I decided, well, I'm just gonna grab some of these um, little clips that I have from, I think it was, a project for Stampin' Up! and um, use that. So here is this wreath. Now the one I have, I made a totally different wreath for the front of the other box that we're gonna do. But here is our, the dimensions here. So, and I did not do them ahead of time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and do it right now. And hopefully I just made this last night. 
but and I need I need my dimensions right here so on this side and actually I have to do it on the bottom because this is writing and I need my writing and my box on the bottom so I have to turn my paper so it's this will be the top and you can read that fall la la so at one and a quarter inches now remember when you're scoring designer paper large tip not the small tip you can go right through it so large tip now that is one score line that's all we're gonna do across. But here, we're gonna do it two inch up to the score line, four inch up to the score line, six inch and eight inch. Okay, that's it. Oops. Okay. So this is so easy. All right, so what I'd like to do is find those score lines and kind of give them a little pinch because we don't want to pinch any of this upper Part because we want it to be nice and curvy. So I'm just gonna give those a pinch so I know where they are. I actually, I think I will cut all but that one. So you can't see it and because it's so printed, but I'm gonna trim up on each of these two, four, six score lines. I'm gonna leave this one alone for now. But basically I'm going to glue this like this. And the only way I know where to stop, actually, I think I can glue, cut this one. I think it's okay. Only to that one and a quarter inch score line now, right? Okay, so we want this underneath. So I'm gonna add the less glue, the quicker it dries. This is the hardest part of this. This is the, this is the only hard part of this box or bag, whatever you wanna call it. Is it, is it a bag in a box? I don't know. But I'm matching that up and going up. <laughs> this is the hard part. Actually, I probably should have used a tape runner now that I think about it, because I could pinch and it would hold and I wouldn't have to wait. But if I make sure that that top edge is straight and then get inside and do some, some pressure, it should hold. And you know how curves are. Curves can be, they just want to keep Keep hold, um, pulling away. So while I'm holding that, I'm going to talk about this wreath. Okay, so see the difference in the two wreaths? Didn't glue this on yet. So this is the smaller, let's see, no, it is the same one. So this is the one of the die cut wreaths and this time I cut and stamped this image and added some pine leaves and some berries and die cut that and put it on top of the die cut. Whereas this one, I die, stamped and die cut the solid wreath, the solid wreath and added the die cut. So you can make so many different combinations of wreaths um, with this set. All right, so now we're simply going to fold these. That's it, that's our box. So we'll just for a nice um, adherence, we're going to put glue, and you'll see why I'm doing it this way. You want the bottom to be smooth, so you want the opposing side there. Now, I, my fingers aren't long enough to do any pressure, so I tend to use a bone folder to get um, that held and adhered and just keep going. Make sure while you're doing that, <laughs> that it's nice and straight. And then you simply, and you want this seam to be not on a hard curve. So you just pinch that close and it holds a lot. It holds a lot of, I, I did Hershey Kisses. <laughs> I think I could use a whole, use one bag for three bin, three of these um, cute little things. So, and you can decide, glue this on, if you want to glue this, and this is just a three inch white circle. You can decide if you want to glue that on or if you want it to be held on like that. And you could add a greeting below. I just kept these really super simple. 
Aren't they cute? And this one I did glue on the circle, so it's on there. It won't come back. And I likely will do that to the other one, but just in um, for a time sense, I think I will stop. So there, those are, what do you call these? Do you think they're, it's a, it's just a bag. I, I, it's almost like a box, but I'm just calling it a treat bag. So tell us, if somebody knows the real name of this, let me know. <laughs> I would like to be able to name them correctly. Oh gosh, it's so hard to name things sometimes. I just usually guess, give a good guess or estimate or come up with something. Okay, so I want to go over my current uh, kits to go before we I sign off here. So one of them features the sweetest Christmas designer paper and all of these cards are fun fold cards. So these are completely fun fold. This one's an easy one but um, you get everything cut out. You get a share of the ribbon, you get a share of the sequins, and you get a half a pack of the Sweetest Christmas designer paper. Remember, everything's cut out. Now the candy canes are from the designer paper, but the punches, the die cuts are all done for you. I really like this one, it's a, it's a gift card. So two of each and a reindeer card. So yeah, just a simple, this one's a simple, um, side fold but yeah that these are available for one more week i think through next week thursday and you go here to order them and it i did use the sweet candy canes stamp set and the trees for sale for some of the greetings and this one does need a tree image but i thought most everybody has some kind of a tree you could stamp anything on here really but that's the only one that's not a greeting on the whole thing Otherwise, you just need some greetings to finish these cards. Red and green, and I think Pool Party ink. So I try and design all my kits to go so you can use greetings to finish them. Okay, the next one features that pretty uh, fitting florets paper that is new, and there are some fun folds here too. But remember, all the die cuts are done for you. This is die cut from the designer paper, but you can fussy cut it if you don't have the dies. Get a share of the um, faceted gems you get a share of the green evergreen ribbon and then you get half a pack of the designer paper that you will use this is one of the fun fold cards here's another one remember all the die cuts are done for you here's another one this one includes the punch pieces and one of these you can choose to add that to your cards or not this is a paper piecing card Full directions are in the tutorial, which comes free. And here is a simple Christmas card. So you can turn it Christmas or not. You don't have to, because I colored those berries in with a red marker. You don't have to do that. Okay, those are my kits. They are available for one week. They are limited supply. I only have a certain number um, because of um, the, uh, the time involved, I guess. I'm trying to get these out before Thanksgiving, if at all possible. So go here if you want any of my kits. I have, I don't know, six or eight current kits right now. Plus my glue stands are there and just tutorials if you'd prefer those. All right, that's it for today. I will, oh, I did want to mention that still, there's still time, I think another week and a half maybe to get in on the double twisted ribbon project um, giveaway. So I will be giving away some pre-embellishments to a couple people that share their twisted ribbon cards on my stamp and share page and i will add that to the link in the description of this video um, when i upload it so thanks so much for watching everybody i appreciate you okay take care and have a great week and try and stamp something it's fun right now to stamp your christmas cards so make sure you make a few special christmas cards for your friends and family all right take care see you next week Bye bye